Hey guys, today I wanted to show you how to set up the Mopin64 emulator for Nintendo 64. Now I'll be doing this on a second generation Fire Stick using an Amazon Fire TV game controller. But this method will be very similar for other devices that will use a Bluetooth controller like an Android box or a Shield. Now if you have a phone, tablet, anything touch screen like that, you won't have to set up a controller unless you want to. You'll have on-screen touch controls with that. So, I'm going to assume that you already have the app installed and that you know how to get it from the file link store. If you don't, go ahead and go back and refer to the first video in this series. So I've already got the app installed. I'm going to go ahead and open it here. And the first thing we'll need to do is set up our controller. So before we do that, we have to go into the menu. Now, if you have a start button and a select button on your controller, you won't have to do this step. But if you have a controller like mine, where it only has a back button and a menu button, or if yours has like the circle button and the back button, you'll want to do this step because you'll need to do it to get your controls working properly. So the first thing to do is up in the top left up here where the three bars are, click on that to open the settings menu. And now we need to go into settings and go down to input and select that. Now I need to check the box for mappable back key and mappable menu key. And again, that's because I don't have start and select buttons. If you have those buttons, don't worry about this. So now I'm going to go back, and the first thing I need to do now is set up a controller profile. So I'll go into profiles, and go down to controller profiles, and select that. And now I like to hide these default profiles right here. These may work for you, they may not. But I like to hide them and just create my own anyway. It makes it easier later on. So I'm going to click this button up here that says hide built-ins and that will hide all those default profiles. And now I want to click on the new button to create a new profile, a new custom profile. And we need to give that a name. You can name this anything you want. I'm just going to call mine Fire1 for Player1. And then select next. And you don't need to put a description here unless you want to. So I'm just going to click Next. And now I'm going to click OK. OK, so now it's going to ask us to set all the buttons. So L will be my L1 button. So I'm going to select L and then press L1. And then I'm going to select R and press R1. Now the Z button was the button on the bottom of the Nintendo 64 controller. It was like your trigger button. So you can set that to L2 or R2. I prefer L2. So I'm going to set that to L2 or my left trigger. Now S is your start button. So now I'm going to have to set that to my menu button since I don't have a start button on this controller. But that's why I set those settings a moment ago. So I'm going to select that and press my menu button. Now you may get this pop up here when you press the menu button. So just press back to close that out. The button is set. So if we go up we can see that it says key code menu. So that button is set to menu. So A, I'm going to select that and press A. And B, I'm going to set that to my X button because that was more like the original Nintendo 64 controller. B was on top there and A was at the bottom. So I'm going to set that to X. Now C pad where your C buttons, those are the yellow direction buttons on a Nintendo 64 controller. For most games, I like to set this to the right analog stick directions. So I'm going to select that and where it says C pad right, I'm going to press my right analog stick to the right. And same for the rest of the directions here. So C pad left, I'm going to press the right analog stick to the left. Down and up. Now D pad, that's our directional pad. So I'm going to set those. 
I'm going to select that and press right on my directional pad. Select, press left, down, and up. Okay, analog, that will be our left analog stick. So I'm going to select that and press right on my left analog stick. And same with the other direction. Select, press left on the left analog stick, down on the left analog stick, and up on the left analog stick. Now for these, these are like our menu options. So I'm, I'm only going to set a couple of these. I'm going to set fast forward, and I'm going to set that to my right trigger. Again, if you use Z for your right trigger, you can set it to the left trigger here. But I'm going to use the right trigger. And then my back key, I'm going to set that to my back button. You can set that to your select button if you have a select button. And the menu key, I'm going to select R3, or pushing in my right analog stick. So I'm going to select that and push down on the right analog stick. Okay, so now our controller profile set up. There's one last step we need to do here. And that is to go to the top right three dots button here. And we want to select the X axis sensitivity first. And bump that up to around 120. If you can't do it with your controller, just go a little bit over 120. And the reason I do that is some games like Mario 64, if you jump in the water and there's no way to get out, you have to jump out. You need to set this to a little over 120 because you won't be able to get out of the water unless this is set that high. I learned that the hard way a long time ago. <laughs> so now I'm going to do the same for the y-axis sensitivity and just bump that up to around 120, maybe a little over if you have to go over. So I'm going to say OK. So now I'm all set up in there. I've created my profile. So I'm going to go back. And I'm going to go back again. And now I need to go to the input menu again under settings. And for controller one profile, I need to set that to the one that I just made. Now remember I named that fire one, so that'll be whatever you named it here. So go ahead and select that. And that'll be your profile. So now we're set. We can start adding the games now and test the controls and make sure it works. So I'm going to go back and go back. And now I'm at the main screen again. So to get the games in here, we need to go over to where it says Refresh ROMs. And I'm going to select that. And now we need to tell the emulator where the games are. So I've already downloaded the games and extracted that folder. I used the Fire64 folder. You can use the other one if you want a lot more games, but not too many will fit on a Fire Stick. So I just use the Fire 64. It's like the top five or six games, I think. So I've put that in my downloader folder. If you're on a regular Android device, it'll probably be in your download folder. But I'm going to select Downloader. And there's my Fire N64 folder. So I'm going to select that. And then I'm going to go over to where it says OK. You can leave all these boxes checked here. So I'm going to go over to OK and select that. And now this is going to load the games in, and it's going to download the cover art for the boxes. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a moment. So there are games in there now. And it has nice box art, cover art. So let's test a game and test our controls and make sure everything works. So I'm going to select Mario Kart 64 and I'm going to select Start. Well, the first time you open this, it may take a moment to load, but then after that it should have some of it stored in the cache and it'll load a little faster for you. So I'm just going to go in to make sure all the controls work. So I'm going to press Start. For me, that's my menu button. If you have a Start button, set your Start button to Start. I'm just going to select a one-player game here. And 
go through here and press OK. I'm going to select Toad. He's my favorite. And just select any cup here and test it out. Okay, so far so good. A is going to be my gas button. Oh, I'm not doing very well yet. I'm trying to look at two screens here. <laughs> I think the controls are working fairly well. I may have missed one in there. My jump button doesn't seem to be working. Oh, there it is. And since this controller is using Wi-Fi Direct instead of Bluetooth, I think I'm getting some input lag while recording because I'm recording this over a Wi-Fi signal. So if you notice, I'm not steering very well. <laughs> that would be why because I'm using too much Wi-Fi bandwidth on the stick. So anyway, I'm going to pause the game here by pressing start and just select quit and back out. All the controls seem to work. So now if your controls didn't work, you can exit the game here and go back into your profile and just readjust and make sure everything's set correctly and then save it again. So to exit the emulator, I'm going to press in my right thumbstick Maybe that doesn't work on the main screen. That works inside of games, so I'm going to press the back button. Yeah. So I'll just press back to exit there. And that's all set up. So now I'm going to show you one more thing. You may run into this at some point later on if you use this a lot. And that's for games like Turok. Now that game used the C buttons to actually move and the analog stick to look around. So that's kind of reversed on a modern controller. So you may want to create another profile for games like that and I'll show you how to do that. So we'll go to menu again up at the top left and go into our profiles and then controller profiles again and we want to make yet another one. So I'm going to click on new and I'm going to name this one Reverse Sticks so I remember what it is. And that basically reverses the controls for the left and right analog sticks. So instead of using our right analog stick for the C buttons, we'll set those to the left analog stick. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a moment. So I'm going to name that Reverse Sticks. and select next and then just select next or OK. okay I'm going to select OK and I'm going to use the same controls on all these except for the C pad buttons and the analog sticks. So L will be L1, R will be R1. Now for games like this they, a lot of these are shooters so I am going to set the Z button to the right trigger this time because it just feels more comfortable in a shooter game. So start again will be my menu button and if you have a start button just set it to your start button. Again since I pressed menu I get this pop-up so I'm just going to press back and I'm going to go up and make sure that start is set to menu. So A will still be A and B will still be X. Okay now C pad right I, I need to set that to my left analog stick right. So I'm going to select it and press my left analog stick to the right. C pad left, I'm going to select it and press my left analog stick left and so on. Left analog stick down, left analog stick up. Now our D-pad will remain the same. So I'm going to select that and press right on my D-pad left on the d-pad, down on the d-pad, and up on the d-pad. Now I'm on the analog controls, so I'm going to set that to my right analog stick. So I'm going to select that and say right, 
select that, press left on the right analog stick, select it, press down on the right analog stick, and up on the right analog stick. Now we'll set these again. So fast forward is going to be my left trigger now since I used C for the right trigger. So I'm going to set fast forward to the left trigger. My back key will remain the back key. And my menu key, again, I'm going to push in the right analog stick. So it'll be my R3 button. I am finished in here. And now I have a new profile called Reverse Sticks. And again, this will be for shooters, maybe like um, Goldeneye or Turok, or maybe Dai Katana. Some of those will have weird controls, and you'll need to use this profile for games like that. So I'll show you how to set that. I don't have those games installed on this stick, but I'll show you how to set those anyway. So I'm just going to select Mario Kart again. And now I don't want to open the game. I want to go into settings here. And this will create settings just for this game. So I'm going to select settings. And controller profile. I would want to change that to reverse sticks. If this were Turok or a game like that that has those strange controls. And I would set that to reverse sticks. And then hit OK. But I'm not going to set it. I'm just going to hit cancel. And go back. And then one more thing I want to show you before I go is if you want to set up a second controller, you can use the same profile you did for the first controller, like the one I named Fire One. But for a two player game, I want to come in and go to settings. And then controller 2 profile, we would set that to our fire one or whatever you named it there and give that a profile. And then there may be one more setting for two player games. I'm trying to remember. But that would be, let's look in controller profiles. No, that's not it. It'll be in our settings and input. That's right. And you would want to set your controllers up in here too and tell them which profile to use. And then on down, I don't have a second controller profile, but once you do, this won't be grayed out anymore. It'll say multiplayer. And what you'll want to do is select multiplayer. And then the app will ask you to press a button on the first controller and then press a button on the second controller so that it remembers the two and can differentiate between them. So if you have two controllers that look exactly alike, you may want to mark them on the bottom with a sticker or something, one and two, just so you know which one it has set up for player one and player two, because they will always be the same. So your player one controller will always be your player one controller and so on. So again, for multiplayer, if you have another controller profile set up here, and maybe even up to four. You can do up to four with most of these emulators. You just want to come into multiplayer and select that and then tell the app which controller is which. It'll tell you to press a button on each one. So I hope this helps you guys out. I know this is one of the more complicated emulators to set up, but once you get it set up, you won't have to worry about it again. You'll be able to play all these great classics again. So I hope this helps you guys out. Happy gaming and happy streaming.